Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in return with having. When a man communicates his experience of a certain demographic population or a certain team of people that represent, whether publicly or privately or secretly, a certain team, we have to be willing to receive the feedback. What we know in the consumer rights movement in the risk management uh, industry is that people have to really understand how what they do impacts a lot of people. You see, most people give their referrals without getting any money back, unlike something like network marketing or affiliate marketing or re relationship marketing. They're not getting a kickback from the company when they say, hey, have you seen that film? It's really good. Or, hey, have you been to the new restaurant over there? It's really delicious. Or, hey, I had an experience at this restaurant that I really want you to know about, and it was horrible, and I just want you to know that. You see, people when they're sharing about their life experience of where they go with their family, where they go with their children, often have experiences with employees who represent those national and local corporations, and they don't really think about what it means to that individual. When a mom takes her kids to a restaurant, she is giving herself a night off from cooking. So when she goes in there, she's expecting polite, standard customer service from a standard concept of a standard operating procedure that literally works to an industry standard across all restaurants. When a person goes into an office supply store and they're expecting pretty much the same experience like going into a Best Buy store, they're expecting people to kind of be polite in their greetings, to leave them pretty much alone, or to be available to answer their questions without being literally on top of them. When people have experiences with law enforcement, they're expecting to be pissed on completely in a polite manner. And openly, those people tend to forget that they represent the houses of the mayors in their cities and, at the end of the day, the actual federally protected White House where the marvelous president and vice president stay or lay or work. The truth of the matter is that there's always somebody who wants to play the jerk in someone's life, but the question that they have to really ask themselves is, are they representing their own personal self in a way that will stand up in federal law court or federal law? The second thing they have to ask themselves is, are they representing their entire family, including their wives, including their children, including their lineage, including their heritage, in a manner in which will stand up over the course of time if there's a glitch and something goes into the news or something goes into the publicity or something makes a PR track that might not be, well, on the level, that might actually be negative as opposed to positive. Another question they have to marvel ask themselves is, how is their behavior representing their actual profession? And what marvelously are they doing to upgrade and upsell their industry? Because it's their life career on the line, not at all in their minds. What's on the line is pretty much all those reputations, what in Japanese culture we call face, of people who just don't know what it is and isn't a disgrace. You see, it's a total and utter disgrace for you if you're actually violating federal law, doing things that are illegal or immoral to you or to someone in your family or to someone else out there. Because at some point, the people that you try to involve in the process of violating social mores, right, social nuance, cultural standards, society expectations, at some point, someone's going to say, hey, what you're doing isn't great for me, and I don't really want to be aiding and abetting the... And what that means is that they'll probably turn on you in some way and call out to somebody who really cares about, at the end of the day, whether or not they're going to be involved in something that's illegal or immoral, or whether they're going to be involved with people who are professional and care about our living, breathing world. You see, we've had those situations where Exxon lost all the oil in the sea. Do you think it went well for that captain? I doubt it because he was literally drinking on the job and there's a whole story behind that. Now I'm not going to recount the whole fucking story, but do we not still remember it today? And what about the Taco Well girl who was kind of goofing around at the early stages and stages of videos and things going online on YouTube and she pretended to spit or did spit in some customer's cup and maybe she didn't actually give that customer that cup unless they videoed her the whole way through, but she obviously ended up in jail like some people like you can do. So the truth is that in life it doesn't matter how great we are as a person, if enough people like to lie, steal, and cheat your life, they will literally do it. But what are they representing? They're representing every person that they've aligned themselves in this lifetime in a way. Not only their intimate, closest relations, but they're also literally relating to people in their community, their actual social networks at their church, their professional networks in their industry, 
and sometimes the community networks that we have that help us to actually make a living because they're kind enough to refer your business while they're really working on struggling on their own living. You see, in life, we have moments of time to speak the truth about the impact we make in a domino effect on the people and the globality of the world. So if you're someone who has COVID, but you're not telling people you have COVID, that is your actual privacy and medical rights, but it does make a difference to people. If they learn later that you have COVID and then they all of a sudden have COVID, who do you think they're going to blame? It's not going to be one of these, well, that's life games. That's the way it goes. That's not true. They will look at you and think that you intentionally withheld from them important information that might have made them make a difference, like choosing to put on a mask with you instead of leaving it off. The one thing I feel about this situation with COVID is that most people are going to choose what they feel is appropriate for their life. If a person wears a mask, it doesn't necessarily mean they have an illness or a flu or a cold. It just might mean that they feel comfortable in that way functioning in the world today. At the same time, if a mask is off, it doesn't mean that that person has, doesn't have anything like avian flu or some sort of illness that you can get from getting you know, stung by a bug or whatnot. What I'm also marveled at are the number of people who sort of get up and, and go, but they don't always make time to defecate on uh, when they're on the go. And then they're stuck and they think, oh, what am I going to do? Because a lot of companies, a lot of places, a lot of restaurants and a lot of stores are not allowing people to utilize their public restrooms. But even in the course of our entire lifetime, we've always had the practical potential of getting an illness, of sitting on some throne in some storage place that we've never been before. It's also possible that the foreigners coming in from foreign lands are actually accidentally or intentionally bringing in marvelous spiders and bugs. And there was actually a, a news story a while back of someone who literally got bit because there was a spider hanging inside the toilet and she didn't know it. And I believe she died. And it was one of these serious things from a Brazilian land or something like that. So there's a lot of reasons that people don't actually want to sit in a public restroom. And there's a lot of reasons that people don't want to pee in the streets without protecting their, well, property rights, if you know what I mean. Because you could put yourself in a bush and find out that there's something in that bush that wants to bite you, sting you, or do worse to you. At the same time, you have the lawful, respectful right in terms of propriety to cover your bits so that you don't actually surprise some parent who wasn't prepared to have to give an educational lesson to their child. And that's absolutely truthful. Most guys know what to do to get out of the way to handle that, but I'm not sure women do. And I can t attest to that because I was really walking through a parking lot on campus and a little girl just sat down and squatted and I was like, oh crap. And I didn't expect that, but she was a little inebriated, but at the very end of it I said, would you like some paper towels? <laughs> just because of the comedy of the moment and she refused. I said, okay, trip and drag, works for me, not my business. But you have to have a little bit of a sense of humor because we do have those moments of time that are humbling for us. And if you're an old person like me, if you've had your head pounded into you know, uh, history by some black child who thought they had the right to do that to you in the middle of the morning when you did nothing at all to them other than say, hey, please go away. That openly, then it might create some incontinence. That might create some additional bloody stools and hemorrhoids. And the truth is, what I'm talking about is clearly privacy and medical rights. But I can talk to you about these things, but what I can relate to you is that God is not pleased with people who lie, steal, and cheat other people out of their lawful rights to their own bodies. You see, in Jesus' time, he said, take this in remembrance of me. This is my body, this is my blood, etc., etc. So if you have even a remote desire to go to heaven today, if you have an even remote, minuscule concept of being, well, someone who's sort of after spirituality, after Christianity, or literally just alludes it, oh, you believe in God? Well, marvelous. But here's the reality. How you behave represents yourself and that amazing, uh, you know, prehistoric man, if you will, that has literally had a marvelous marketing career of his entire motherfucking life. And I did do a story on, on a couple people like that in my past history of presenting in my own uh, business forum talking about technology tips, but that's not my point. When I talk about me, my goal is to piss you off, not at all. My goal is to remind you of how important life is. And if you don't get how important your relationships are around you, if you don't get how you can be found guilty in a court of law because you just thought you'd get away with something, you just thought you'd play with something, you just thought you'd interfere with someone's life, you want to think it over and think about whether or not you want that to happen to you.